scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is um, probably one of the areas that people have not really taken out the time to understand because of the nature of his person and the way that he operates praise the lord now the bible very clearly tells us how that revealed from scripture the father has been seen even though his entire form may not have been articulated and then the Bible tells us that the word, the logos of God has been seen both in this earth realm and then seated in heaven. That there is a personality that sits upon a throne at the right hand of the father called the son, the word. But when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Bible seems to reveal his operation and then conceal his form. And the fact that the Holy Spirit doesn't seem to have a form, as it were, known to us from Scripture, uh, it's made relating with Him a very difficult thing for many people because we are sensually driven. We want to be able to touch, to feel, etc., etc. And so I think it's very important as we wrap up this conference, this is a ministry that believes in the operation of the Holy Spirit. Your pastor is an advocate of yieldedness to the Spirit. The possibilities that have been produced in this church attest to the fact that it cannot be the work of a man. Hallelujah. And um, I have been a benefactor of the ministry of this great personality called the Holy Spirit. I remember growing up, I would hear Benny Hinn alongside many of the great fathers of faith today who have demonstrated a very rich heritage in the Spirit. And I got interested in the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to know more. Not just because I thought he would bring power for ministry and so on and so forth. I truly wanted to know him. And um, I pray that within the few minutes we have to share. Um, would not be very detailed. I'll focus on his ministry. But it is very, very important. Jesus walks upon the earth and he's walking signs, wonders, mighty miracles. He demonstrated wisdom beyond this age. And when he was preparing to leave, he gathered the disciples who were at that time already frustrated because it didn't seem like their followership was yielding any result. Once and again would hear them converse with Jesus asking as to what their stakes were for following Jesus. They had left fishing. They had left a lot of things to follow this guy who claimed to be the Messiah. And then Jesus began to introduce them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He called him many things. The 15th chapter of John and the 16th chapter of John contains a very detailed information about the Holy Spirit and his ministry. And so Jesus himself made us to understand that it is very necessary for a man to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit in order to be 
a full representation of all that is resident within the Christ. Are we together? That it is impossible to represent the purposes of God in the flesh, no matter how well intentioned. You will have to subscribe to the dealings of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself, the logos of God, walking in the flesh, seemed helpless until the Bible says he been baptized of John. The Bible says he came out of the water and straightway the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. And then a voice spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit is called many things. The spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit is called um, the spirit of truth. He's called the wisdom of God. He's called the spirit of glory. Several names attempt to describe him. Who is this spirit? Who has turned ordinary men to signs and wonders? We read all through history. Uh, history in the body of Christ is full of ordinary people who encountered this mysterious personality and he turned their lives into signs and wonders. Great women like Catherine Kuhlman would record again and again the, the benefit of their encounter. She would cry and sob on stage saying, do not grieve my best friend. And it didn't make sense to the audience who is this mysterious best friend with no form and yet real? Great patriarchs like Benny Hinn would talk again and again about his ministry and the results that have followed their lives. They have brought glory to God. Others who have gone now before us like Reinhard Bonke, T.L. Osborne, these men subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it is important that we do not lose the fervency and the awareness of how helpless we can become without him. When Jesus gave the apostles the great commission, they were in a hurry to go and he said, tarry ye. Gentlemen, do not embarrass yourself. Be patient. There is a personality that will come from me, from heaven. Are we together now? The Holy Spirit came upon ordinary people, very weak people, and turned them into objects of praise. Many of them unlearned. And yet when the Holy Spirit came, they demonstrated dimensions of dominion and results. We need the Holy Spirit. Now theologically speaking, the Holy Spirit has a threefold function. Very quickly, the Holy Spirit's operation is threefold. Number one, he has a ministry to creation. Please do not forget. If you're writing, please write it down. The Holy Spirit has a ministry to creation. Isn't it amazing? You know, most people would think he has a ministry just to believers or unbelievers. His first ministry is to creation. The first revelation of God, the, the dimension of the Godhead revealed in scripture that we see was the Holy Ghost. Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, he says, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he says, now the earth was dark, void, formless, and the spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. And then verse 3 says, and Elohim said, light be. You see that? So the personality of the Holy Spirit revealed when Jesus was about to become flesh, the Bible lets us know that Gabriel appears to Mary and begins a discourse with her. Oh, this is what will happen. You will carry a child and this and that, this, this and that. And she said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And Gabriel replies, the power of the highest. He's not just called a person. He's a power. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Praise the Lord. So he has a ministry to creation. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. We'll look at it very quickly. His ministry is not limited to creation alone. Plants and animals need the Holy Spirit. The earth needs the Holy Spirit. The sea needs the Holy Spirit. You will be amazed to know the ministry of the Holy Spirit to creation. Withdraw his ministry and you will see how crippled the earth becomes. His ministry is not just to men the inhabitants 
inanimate things require him. He is the life-giving dimension of God. Are we blessed? And then his ministry to believers. So let's look at it very quickly. The Bible tells us, please look up. It says, until the spirit be poured from on high. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then it says, the wilderness. The wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. The wilderness and the vine are plants. And yet, they depend on the outpouring of the spirit. Are we together now? That the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine. Of course, I know we use it prophetically to mean the wilderness in my life. But this statement was literal. That when the Holy Spirit is poured upon a space, a sphere, he is able to turn chaos into order. So he can turn a wilderness to become a fruitful vine. And then a fruitful vine to become a forest. The Holy Spirit... When there was confusion in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, it happened as a result of the judgment of Lucifer and the then creation. Darkness, void, over the face of the deep. There was no human alive, yet the Holy Spirit had to come for order to begin to happen. What is his ministry to creation? He is the life-giving factor. Listen to me, plants and animals and the seas do not just survive on the geographic and biological activities that happen on earth. It is the limit of science and we respect science for its evolution through the years. But there is still a lot that science is yet to discover. And I tell you in advance, the unit of life is not an atom. The unit of life is God. The unit of life is the Holy Spirit. As we continue to advance in intelligence, we'll get to a point where we'll be brought to our knees again. That in the beginning, God. In the beginning of anything is God. The beginning of rocks, God. Plants, God. The seas, God. He has to be Alpha. It's a position that no other technology can contend with. When the Bible calls him Alpha, it doesn't mean the first. It means the originator. Are, are we blessed already? So the Holy Spirit, a representation of the Godhead, Alpha. Now, but I'm interested in his ministry to unbelievers and then believers because most of us here are believers. He has a twofold ministry to unbelievers according to John chapter 16. I think we start from verse 12. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit provides the system of conviction jesus is teaching here and he's talking about the holy spirit i have many things to tell you but you cannot bear them now how be it next verse when he the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you into all truth and he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. And so on and so forth. When you read it down, he now tells you that he will reprove the world of three things. One, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It's amazing that miracles can challenge people, but not create conviction. I hope you realize that when Jesus walked upon the earth, they saw the signs, the wonders. They saw the dead come back to life. They saw him multiply bread. They saw water turn to wine, etc., etc. And yet, the Bible says some doubted. In spite of the miracles wrought by the Christ himself, it was not enough to produce conviction. Signs and wonders are wonderful, but they will never replace the convicting power of the Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn Saul into Paul. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn Cephas to Peter. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn ordinary men. He is the one who provides conviction. There is a spirit in man. He's planted a conscience in man. But it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So as the word is coming like this, he is the one who makes the word fruitful. He is the one who gives the word life within you. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lecture, an intelligent lecture that may impress you. And you share the grace and walk away and cannot remember anything. The Holy Spirit convicts, he reproves. 
every time you make an altar call and someone comes to stand to make Jesus Lord of his life do not trivialize that experience a lot happened a man will not just get up and embarrassingly walk in the midst of people to stand to quit another life and receive another no it takes the Holy Spirit the convictor of men it is also the Holy Spirit that brings men to a point where they recognize the need for Jesus it looks very obvious now because the veil has been taken from your eyes it is amazing who can look and yet they do not see the Bible tells us that when Jesus resurrected he was on his way to Emmaus and he met two men who were standing with the resurrected Christ and yet they could not recognize him just because you are around the things of God does not mean you can see it takes the Holy Spirit to open your eyes are we together now the Bible tells us something very very interesting how that when God was coming to judge Sodom and Gomorrah if you remember that story very carefully are we together now because the people wanted to have an affair with the angels and lot tried to stop them and the people were being stubborn the bible says the angels struck them with blindness they were standing near the door yet could not hold the door to open it just because you are close to spiritual things does not mean you can see there are people who will sit and listen to a message and you are crying and then they are laughing at you wondering what in the world should convict you so much as to bring tears why should you go on your knees they watch us when we worship they watch us when we roll they watch us when we shout they watch us when we cry and they never know what this means they don't know what you mean to me they don't know It takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of people how many people laugh at the ministry of the Holy Spirit they see people pray in the spirit and wonder and debate and come up with all kinds of theological dissertations to prove his ministry has not been valid in today's world do not take for granted that your eyes have been opened to see many people came to look for the christ even the apostles and they did not find him but it took a woman when she came and looked at the tomb she did not find him she stayed there until she now saw him at the garden she shouted rabboni you are god i have seen you next time you see a loved one who is struggling to change struggling to see struggling to know why you are committed in church struggling to know why you are fasting for 21 days struggling to know why you wake up in the night and pray you're already a millionaire why fast you're already a billionaire why pray you're already an intelligent student why pray i thought all of this the passion for god was supposed to be for people in need and they see that you seem to be complete yet your passion doesn't dwindle you must pray that the the eyes of their understanding be open so that they will see the bible says in isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord they must behold him for who he is i have met people who have seen him i have seen him myself but it's not just a visionary context that the spirit of god must bring the reality of jesus to you otherwise the faith life will become a ritual a burdensome ritual it is the ministry of the holy spirit that gives life to your christian experience otherwise you will just follow through because people are doing it and let me tell you one day you will be tired even if you are a pastor it's the reason why people do not last the staying power the fortitude for continuity is not there after 10 years 20 years they now begin to write all kinds of things and say i'm tired of lying I'm tired of lying. I can't pretend this. He looked at them and said, Will you also go? And they said, To whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Are we blessed? Now, his ministry to believers, we have to rush because of time. There's a twofold ministry, and, and, and I just want to introduce it quickly and then we'll pray. The ministry of the Holy Spirit to believers. Number one, the ministry of transformation. Please pay attention. 
Now, this one concerns us. The Holy Spirit is the agency authorized by God to take advantage of the word and sponsor transformation in the saints. Transport, transformation is impossible until the Holy Spirit gives life to the word. This is very, very important. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. Not that he will give you. Do you know even if all you have is truth, you can still be destroyed. Truth in itself is not what liberates. It is the guidance of the truth to be able to apply it line upon line. Satan uses the word of God to kill. The, the word is like a sword. You can use it and, and, and kill yourself. So it is not just because you have access to truth and that means you have liberty. No. It must be sequentially arranged like you build a house. Are we together now? The Holy Spirit. Let me give you an instance. Did you know that there is there are information that when you hear before hearing others it will destroy you i give you an instance when a believer just gets born again and the first message he hears is about wealth and prosperity as powerful as it is that believer is in trouble except the mercy of god intervenes do you know why the reason is because he has not received the messages that bring death to the flesh and enthrone Christ experientially. And the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. And so when that guy accesses wealth, he's not been taught that all things in this kingdom belong to God, including the wealth. He's not been given an understanding that owners are rebels in this kingdom, that we do not own things, we are only stewards. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So the absence of that foundation will corrupt something that is good. Now he prospers by engaging the principles that make for the blessing and he does that at the detriment of his soul. The spirit of God guiding us. You need to know this before this. If you do not know, for instance, that every time God blesses you, it, it provides a repulsion from the gate of darkness. You do not know that. Now, when you are blessed, you will be surprised. When things attempt to fight the word of God in your life, you will think it's strange. But when you have been taught that this is the side effect of loving God, he said it. Are we blessed now? The Holy Spirit bringing transformation. Everybody say transformation. The name given to the process that makes you like the Christ in experience is called transformation. Transformation is more than enlightenment. Transformation is more than enlightenment. The Bible says in, um, I think, 1 Corinthians now, chapter 3, and it says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18 renewal of your mind do you know why your mind needs to be renewed in fact the bible says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul he calls the transformation and the renewal of your mind the culmination the completion of your salvation experience the reality of what has happened in your spirit man now finds expression in the solical realm to make sure that you are changed that this mind that was in christ is now in you also Transformation is important because your mind is the only gateway that allows the Holy Spirit and allows demons even to your life. If your mind cannot host God, you cannot host God. Are we blessed? Yon hey, hey is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. There is a spirit in man, Eli, who said, and the breath of the Almighty can make men of understanding. That means I can start in ignorance. I can start completely naive of spiritual things. And then the Holy Spirit holds my hands, brothers and sisters. And while you laugh at me, while my background continues to show why I should not rise, the Holy Spirit vetoes all these limitations and begins to culture me into a way and a dimension. This is powerful. Never talk about a man who has chosen to hold the hand of the Holy Ghost because that man is on his way to becoming a wonder. Regardless Regardless of what your opinion is he is a master at turning chaos to glory I know this because my life is a testimony 
for with God all things are possible the Holy Spirit holds your hands and turns you ladies and gentlemen into a sign and a wonder an object of praise an object of awe regardless your background regardless your limitation it doesn't matter what is an advantage or a disadvantage he is the advantage hallelujah transformation transformation how does he transform number one he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive to god first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 he makes you alive to god he strengthens your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit so that you are now alive you are now alive you can be alive and yet you are dead but he is able he says awake thou that sleepest he was talking to those who were awake yet he said awake thou that sleepest he activates your spiritual senses number two he brings revelation and understanding of scripture this is very powerful the holy spirit his his ministry of transformation he brings revelation and he brings understanding spiritual illumination john 14 26 the bible tells us that the holy spirit himself will bring us that dimension of supernatural understanding I wish I had time would have walked through a few scriptures but it's important for you to know that the Holy Spirit is the only one who is able to bring understanding insight illumination look up please you need the Holy Spirit to gain understanding spiritual knowledge is not secular education secular education will demand will demand your focus are we together now and the fortitude to understand a mentor who guides you along a body of thought but that's not how spiritual things work you can be as intelligent but when you are dealing with spiritual things the bible already tells you that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit why because they are spiritually discerned you need to sustain a sense of perception that is higher than science for instance it is a normal principle that when you gather you increase but in this kingdom the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth that word that is meat and tends to poverty this is this is a mystery that is only privy to those who are in the kingdom it does not make sense to scatter and yet increase are we together yes he brings to you understanding how does he transform he brings guidance and direction guidance and direction isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 please let's hurry up isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it and when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left let me tell you this there is no level of maturity that gives you direction in this life the variables to succeed the variables to remain are too many for you your lifetime cannot mentor you enough to understand life you will need one who is ancient to hold your hand and lead you just because you are 30 years 40 years you will be amazed the things you will learn after 60 years of your life after 70 years of your life don't put your life at that level of risk it's important to step back and one who was there when the earth was being created who sponsored everything understands the terrain of living when he holds your hand he can speak to you the holy ghost you may be looking for a job and never find one and yet a word comes from him and just opens you up this is very important guidance and direction is very important he shows you the ways of god bible study without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn you into a religious person he has to be the lord of your study life he has to be the lord of your prayer life are we together look at me let me share with you something do you know how what we call the sanhedrin the the council of the elders the religious people do you know how it started back down to the time when moses the spirit of god that was upon moses fell upon 70 elders are we bible students remember it started with the holy ghost 
not with the scroll it didn't start with commandments the holy ghost came upon 70 elders so that they will be able to help and and bring the ministry of deaconry to help moses but as time went on they took the holy spirit out of the picture by the time we get to jesus all they had were scrolls and the spirit was no longer there a people who started with the holy ghost now do not even know him but they knew the torah they knew the pentateuch the five books of moses they would say it in their law he said ye heir not knowing the scripture not not having you have it but you do not know it are we together now yes it says you search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me the scriptures testify of me that means the end is not the bible reading the bible reading is a road map that leads you into an experience are we together now the goal is not for you to cram scripture the goal is for you to become an expression so your reading is a is a transitory process your bible study and all your study is not supposed to end with a religious indoctrination that flatters us into thinking we know god just because we can quote a scripture no that the words must become spirit and life so that you yourself will now become a living epistle a continuity of what was written the holy ghost transforming you transforming me and this transformation is not limited to preachers no 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 the holy spirit brings the culture and the life of heaven to a man he transforms you so that you do not look like your former self there is a difference between the you before and the you now he shakes off your limitation and brings you to that point everybody please say transformation hallelujah this is very powerful the apostles were transformed because of the ministry of the holy spirit i have found my servant david and the spirit of god came upon david and turned him into a sign and a wonder the holy spirit came by his power upon the jaw boss the jaw bone of a donkey and with it he destroyed three thousand philistines there is nothing the holy spirit cannot do when his ministry is allowed are we together the ministry of transformation the next ministry to believers and we pray is the ministry of empowerment please say empowerment the holy spirit not only transforms listen listen your transformation is your proposition to your world that this is what christ seeks to produce but you must be empowered to defend it you must be empowered to defend it transformation without empowerment will create another kind of error because you will propose too many spiritual possibilities without the grace to validate them you will tell people god can heal you will tell people god is a restorer you will tell people god gives speed and whet their appetite like the fig tree having green leaves and then they come and find that there is no substance to your communication you will need power blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings listen to me the bible says but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil i submit to you dear people of god that there is a lot of boastful speaking in the body of christ without the grace requirement to defend it this is why our talk is soon becoming a nuisance to society we propose too many things about god and we round up services and nothing happens we tell people god is able to do this god is able to do that god is able to do this we live in a generation that is not just loyal they need results they need real results let me tell you this this generation needs real results we must be able to make the word become flesh so that we can now behold the glory if god prospers let our lives show it if god brings speed let our lives show it if god restores let our lives show it 
Are we together now? Yes. When Moses, I think I've shared it here. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he did not talk for long. He just told him who sent him and the rod continued the talking. There must be something in your life that keeps talking even when you are quiet. Thy rod and thy staff. There's too much talking. God can lift. God can anoint. My brothers and my sisters, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is an authorization. It's a, it's, 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 it legitimizes your operation. It's an ordination into the possibilities of the Christ. It is true that the Holy Spirit empowers. He empowers a businessman. He empowers a man of God. He empowers a student. He empowers a anybody. But we have rejected that ministry of empowerment. Listen, I wrote something down here. Confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology. The strengthener of our speakings is the Holy Spirit. That we are releasing words that contain spirit and life. We are not just noisemakers. Are we together? Yes, sir. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 4. The messianic prophecy that applies to the church prophetically. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he hath anointed. The word there is to be called to legitimize an operation akin to an ordination. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me. And then he begins to list the things that he has anointed me to do. To bind the broken hearted to set the captives free, to deliver those who are oppressed, etc., etc. Are we together now? Yes. It says to give them beauty for ashes, the joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they be called the oaks or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our father glorified, the Bible says, when ye bear much fruit. Please say results shout it please say results you must you I, I i want to challenge you as we wrap up this conference and and this this moment of spiritual emphasis you must cry for supernatural results there, there's too much there's too much of natural things it it, it, it must, people will only wonder if it is the lord's doing supernatural dimensions these things I write unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Let the sick be healed in a level and dimension that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Did the Bible not say we are his workmanship? Not just his explanators. We are his workmanship recreated in Christ. The Bible says that it be known to principalities and powers by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold wisdom. The Holy Spirit can empower. He can place something upon your life that commands favor from everywhere. And now people begin to wonder and say, how do you do it? And then you lead them to the Christ, the giver of all good things. Listen to me. Don't leave this service this afternoon without contending for higher dimensions of the empowerment of the Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8, please. I'd like you to read the A part when you find it projected. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Go ahead. One, two, go. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. You can be full of power by the operations of a herbalist. You can be full of power by the, the stretch of your intellect. But the basis of the power that I sustain comes from the spirit. The spirit is the custodian of the power of God. I am full of power by the spirit. It takes the power of God to dominate in this wicked world. 66 and verse 3 psalms say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you it takes power the bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our god and, and so on and so forth and then he says he according as his divine power everybody say his divine power your faith connects you to his divine power but the giver of the possibilities in your life is his divine power. 
hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness the power of the holy spirit it's not a, a pentecostal gibberish that people talk just because they are charismatic no the power of the holy spirit is god's ability at work in a man the fortitude to produce god's dimension of results even though you are a man let the ability of the holy spirit come upon you and then it begins to define all the possibilities that are in your life listen i've shared it here i think um maybe last year or so but let me tell you this brothers and sisters please hear me the anointing of the holy spirit is in levels and the anointing of the holy spirit is also dimensional just because you have an anointing does not mean every problem will be solved no the problems are solved according to the measure of grace that is received. Otherwise, there would be no need for further impartations. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Are we still here? It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The key word there is how God. Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus. Not that he was anointed. He was so anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Because God was with him. It takes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to excel in business. It takes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to excel in career. Ministry. Your church today is an attestation of the investment of the spirit and his power upon your pastor and upon your leaders nicodemus comes to jesus by night and says rabbi i know that thou art a man sent from god he says for no man can do these things except god be with him there are tokens of the presence of god with a man that when god is with you it is impossible to doubt it because he will leave tokens the signs, the wonders, the supernatural manifestations of the power of God. We must return to a dimension where our lives are supernatural always. How you get your job, how you are promoted, how you are sustained, how you move. In one day, someone's one year testimony comes to you. It's a dimension. Listen, God is not just interested in making us have and make progress he wants to make a message out of our lives he calls us living epistles if all people know about you is you made money you move forward you are a christian your life is not compelling enough to bring glory to god how it happens is where the glory is derived from oh you got a job by an uncle helping you it's too natural for an applause but that you were sitting and an angel told someone give him a job now god is not interested in the job as it were the job is yours is your benefit but the testimony how it was derived is where the majesty and the might of god comes are we together now i worked for 20 years and then i built a great duplex it's too natural we just say well done you are a human being who used your time well But when someone is sleeping and sees you in a vision and God says, don't tell him, build the house. I want to use him an, as an example of what we call prepared blessings. Build the house, give him the key because the master has need of it. This is what the grace of God can do. The grace of God is not limited to salvation. The grace of God is how we live. The grace of God is a representation of every good and perfect gift that comes from above. It's a compendium of all the possibilities in God routed through the Christ to the saints. It's called grace. It's not just limited to the, the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. That's just a dimension of grace. Favor is grace. Mercy is grace. Speed is grace. We're going to pray. It's important that we carry something upon our lives. It's been my message for the body of Christ for many years. Embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit and he will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. Do not embrace him when you find out you are called into ministry. No. Embrace him the day you realize you are a man. He is the life-giving factor. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change.
I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace Listen History is full of people who were mightily used by the Holy Ghost. My brothers and my sisters, I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is not a preacher's sermon. This is a revelation. Edit difficulty out of your life. Edit confusion in your life. Out of your life. By embracing this mysterious personality. He can empower you. He can place something upon your life you were not born with. He can place something upon your life that is not on your degree. He can place something upon your life that your background did not capture. He is called the Holy Ghost. The spirit of power. The spirit of grace. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide. He will reveal. Look at me, please. We are going to pray. Let me show you a scripture God showed me. Mighty God. Second Corinthians, please. Chapter 9 and verse 8. Haruskali brandaskila hashibar hashibada. And God, H-I-C-C, and God has an ability to make all grace. Listen carefully. Please listen to me. I want you to be sensitive. I'm seeing a wind. Just move. I'm going to pray for you shortly. Please, guys, let's, the instrumentalist, you can just walk together. Listen to me. Every dimension in the spirit, please look up. There is a grace allocated for that possibility. There is a grace that produces speed. Please listen. There is a grace that produces restoration. There is a grace that produces favor. You are not favored because you are in need. No. There is a grace upon you. Please listen to me. I know what I'm saying. There is a grace that compels a generation to hear your voice just because you have what to say does not mean people will listen to you there is a there is a hear ye him anointing that when it's upon you you will open the two lift gates of territories not cities not churches because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee he was not talking about women virgin dimensions that you are introducing to spaces you have never been because of something that is upon your head thou anointest my cup my head with oil my cup runneth over are we together now you must covet listen you cannot walk in the grace of yesterday and have today's results no 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 yesterday's grace was sufficient for yesterday's issues remember the bible is talking about us being sufficient capable rising up to the task and the bible says the mechanism by which this is achieved is that god is able to coordinate the various graces that the prophetic word upon you require if god says this is your year of expansion and vision there are certain graces that must be present otherwise december 31st will come and that word will not be there and the bible says in such a conference god is able to coordinate all grace some of you will need speed some of you will need restoration some of you will need prosperity you will need favor the bible says god is able able to make all grace abound towards you that ye having all sufficiency may abound to all good works listen to me results in this kingdom are not commanded by intentions alone results in this kingdom are not even commanded by the proposition linguistic propositions it takes the energizing of the spirit to prove the reality of the Christ to all and sundry here and now by this you bring glory to the Christ 
then you make Galatians 1 24 become a reality and they glorified God in me and they glorified God my life has become an effulgent you will say of signs and wonders next time you read the Bible you are reading yourself it's no longer a book that was printed by Zondervan or white ticker house it has become your experience and the hand of the Lord came upon um, Elijah and he ran so speed is possible Lord where is that grace and God is able to make all grace including that grace to rest upon you that by March you have already done what you plan to do 2025 it's over already please listen I'm not I'm not just motivating you this is spirit communication God is able you're a businessman you will be tired of just using the strength of the flesh to draw people the same grace that brought the animals into the ark of Noah there is a grace that draws men into the ark Noah just stood at the ark and a, a strange grace drew the animals two by two seven by seven till they came into the ark when that grace rests upon your business you will marvel and wonder at the things that men do for you listen listen loyalty is more than just a leadership principle loyalty is a grace there is a grace that comes upon you the bible says certain men came to david in the cave of adulam and they vowed that they will make him king they came and met a weak leader a leader who was in hiding and yet his weakness was not a factor they said we will save you we will lift you and you will rule over us the possibilities that we desire are governed by graces please listen to me it is in the office of the Holy Spirit to bring prophecy to pass the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that proceeds forth when his word comes it coordinates all the human machineries to see to it that the speakings of God comes to pass it does not just happen by luck I'm explaining this to you so that when your life becomes an effulgence of signs and wonders you will give God glory but not be surprised because it can happen again and again that means when you leave this service and you see 10 missed calls and someone is saying where are you what I want to give you I cannot I I need you to be there and you say what is it and then he reminds you that you just carried something you did not come to church with a, a an engracing of the spirit listen to me all things are possible but not under every condition there is a condition that manipulates favor above you there is a condition that will compel a generation to hear you there is a condition that will compel wealth and abundance will make Psalm 112 a reality in your life blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands the Bible declares that his seed shall be mighty upon earth then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever there is a grace that is responsible for that there is a grace that opens your eyes to scripture Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9 the grace that makes all men see there is a grace that opens the eyes of men to see Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say to me so as we pray I know that our time is spent but we're going to have a minute or two to pray and in that prayer you are going to cry out for the various graces that control possibilities that are not yet at work in your life listen to me when it was time the Bible says that God mandated Moses to anoint Aaron. Listen, and it says it in a very interesting way. It says that Aaron was full of the Spirit of God. And yet, he told Moses to anoint Aaron and to take some of his honor and give Aaron. Honor is transferable. When the grace for honor is upon you, people will veto your limitations as though it does not exist. Are we together? for your ministry i believe there are men and women of god around and watching for your business for your life listen father all the graces that must be coordinated 
synergized, galvanized around my life in this season to make my life an effulgence, a revelation of prophecy, a reflection of the possibilities that reside in the Christ I obtain by faith. Lift your voice and pray. Someone is praying here. You're about to encounter a grace that will shift you into realms untold, dimensions beyond your imagination. Please pray. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. My life must change. It's my prophecy. My life must change. Ah, my life must change. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was a river to my knees. And he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins and he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river hicc pray on these 21 days all through this time words have come but on the 21st day oh god let something rest upon my life and upon my destiny shift my life shift my finances hallelujah hallelujah please look at me we're rounding up one scripture and then I pray for you and we're done. John chapter 17 from verse 1. Jesus is praying to the Father before he would begin the journey of his passion. And the Bible says that he lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he said, the hour is come. Everybody say the hour is come. So there is a timing for every season in our lives. You must know when not just the time but the hour. He says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, the time to favor her. Yea, the Kairos time is come. It says, glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. That means, Lord, use me as a trophy to attract men to you. Use me as a testament of wonder. My life is that available to be a revelation. They may not understand your speakings from the realm of the spirit but let me be a manifestation of your possibilities in ministry in life and i vow that through that you will be glorified someone lift your voice and pray i'm available oh god to be used as an instrument for signs and wonders i'm available oh god to be used as a conduit of your power pray for your family Pray for your ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen please. Listen. Please look up. I admit to you and I submit to you that outside of the grace of God and the investment of the spirit we are not worth much. The wow factor in our lives is captured in the weightiness of the graces that surround us. This is what translates us into spectacular individuals that on our own, there is not much to be desired. On our own, by our strength, we, we are not worth that degree of admiration except that at the back of our frailty is a support system a compendium of graces that can afford possibilities higher than the realm of men this must be your desire behind frail men behind limited men 
the workings of the spirit turning ordinary men to manifest godlike features and so you must pray that as he rests his hand upon you in the few minutes we have lord let what comes upon me grant me the grace to prove let me be able to prove the validity of your faithfulness hallelujah this is why i came to be an extension by the spirit to sponsor and allow the transference of possibilities in our lives hallelujah please lend me five minutes and i'm done praise the lord young lady look at me this lady i'm seeing the hand of god come upon you right now there is a very strong anointing and the lord is saying that he's bringing you to realms of visions great visions in the spirit i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus the christ of god now i want to pray for you is it all right if we just pray five minutes please lift your hands let's pray impartation is a transference of possibilities you can have something you did not come to church with in addition to all the graces and the investment of the spirit deposited upon you you can carry things graces possibilities and creation was mandated to answer you based on the grace that you carry every grace has a voice it calls what it was designed to call when you carry the grace that makes for favor it will go around lagos while you are sleeping and attract the possibilities that make for you to be a testament on that wise hallelujah hallelujah i stretch my hands we may not have time to bring people out but let me just pray my god i want to release the grace for speed there is a real grace for speed that can cause people to step into dimensions in a hurry i stretch my hands at the count of three from the front to the back the left to the right help them please in the name of jesus the christ of god take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now speed to your destiny in the name of jesus receive the grace for speed by the power of the holy ghost i declare that you will run and overtake the chariots of ahab down to jesreel speed in business you are in ministry here receive speed in the name of jesus receive speed hallelujah i'm seeing the number 17 there is a healing anointing a strange grace for the healing ministry right now is coming on them I wish this time would have brought them forth here because I need to pray for them. Right now I stretch my hands. That healing grace. Please help me. In the name of Jesus. Grace for healing. Grace for healing. Carry that grace now. It's coming on women. It's coming on men. Please help them. In the name of Jesus. Help that lady. I release that grace. Step into it. Dimensions of the power of God to heal dimensions of the power of God to save take that grace now you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life must change my friend look at me this young man on white take that grace right now by the power of the Holy Ghost you are stepping into a new dimension of grace and the Lord is saying you will never never be weak again your inner man being strengthened by the spirit the lord is bringing this woman i don't know who she is a mighty grace for healing this is what i'm seeing the grace of god is upon you i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord wants me to release a grace that makes for restoration there are people here who have lost money there are people here who have lost things please believe it and receive it in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare between now and march by reason of this grace that comes on you i prophesy restoration restoration of time restoration of resources restoration of relationships hallelujah praise the lord the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing an eagle every time i see an eagle is a prophetic dimension 
of the spirit this is not for everyone but right now the power of god is coming i'm seeing 19 the number 19 19 people lord where are they from the front to the back i open up prophetic wells and i declare step into that dimension now shake it take it take it up step into that dimension spring up all wells wells of the prophetic upon women upon men i prophesied by the god of heaven the eyes that see the ears that hear i activate it by the spirit visions of the night visions of the day in the name of jesus sustain an intelligence of the spirit my friend look at me this man in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i'm seeing an anointing and the lord is saying he's moving you to new dimensions in the spirit take that fire now in the name of jesus christ now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so the name of jesus i pray for everyone who labors in doctrine and the word ministering the purposes of the spirit carry fire right now in the name of jesus christ spiritual illumination access to light in the name of jesus christ let me pray favor upon your life we cannot close this conference without favor look at me my brothers and my sisters i plead with you and i beseech you as the apostle will say to obtain and receive this grace the favor of God is a wonder and a marvel that will take us eternity to study the possibilities that can be programmed upon the life of an individual. The favor of God projects his jealousy towards you and he will compel everything to reflect Christ. The favor of God is real. The heart of every man is at the mercy of the father of spirits. God himself being the father of spirits he can compel in one day the attention of kings towards you is part of his system of coordinating all grace towards you because many of us have been limited and territorially speaking many of us come from regions where we do not have a territorial advantage you must outsource your intelligence and advantage from God's favor provision I pray for you right now Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. If it's projected, please give it to us. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked at her. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, And Esther obtained favor in the what? Favor works with sight. When favor is upon you, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man. For as long as they can see you, it is, is light through perception. The moment they see you, they are compelled. It's an ability of the spirit you cannot explain. In the name of Jesus, may that grace that compel men to bless you, to be interested in your lifting, let it rest upon you in Jesus' name. Let it rest upon you in Jesus' name. Let it rest upon you in Jesus' name. Finally, the Bible says, please listen to me. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. A new year and a new season is God's mercy system to help you forget yesterday. Because yesterday may come with its strategies, its pain, its losses, and all the disappointment and the ills. And so he separates your yesterday and your tomorrow by using a mystery called today. Today becomes a dividing line that separates it heath and tither and grants you an opportunity to start afresh again. But if the grace of God does not rest upon your today, your today will become like yesterday. Because yesterday seeks to relieve itself. Yesterday does not believe it is dead. So it uses your imagination to come back to life. You will need an anointing that crushes yesterday 
to be gone and to be gone forever it was miriam that sang and said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its rider my yesterday has been thrown into the sea are we blessed in the name of jesus the grace to start afresh i'm speaking prophetically to someone the business didn't go well in 2019 the family didn't go well your plans didn't work out as planned in the name of jesus we anoint 2020 for you in addition to it being a year of visions and expansion let it be a year of speed let it be a year of recovery let it be a year of power let it be a year of new beginnings a new cycle of possibilities in the mighty name of jesus look at me when the lord caused cain cain looked at god and said the penalty and the cause upon me is too grievous everybody who sees me will kill me and god put a mark of exemption upon cain and he said by that mark no one should touch him the bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying in spite of the evil that is plaguing society kidnappings accidents rumors of wars by the spirit of god i place a mark upon you and i call it a mark of exemption i place it upon your family i call it a mark of exemption exemption from tragedy exemption from failure exemption from limitations in the name of jesus christ for you this year let it be that when men say there is a casting down let your testimony alongside everyone connected to this family let it be that there is a lifting up in the name of jesus i bless all the workers in this ministry rise to new dimensions I bless the leaders and the pastorate in this ministry. Rise to new dimensions. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We had a brief session with your pastor this morning. And he was asking me a few questions. What I saw God doing in the church. And I, we spoke a few things. It was on stage so I can say it now. I told him that I saw God bringing a new and a fresh anointing and shifting this ministry to new dimensions in lips and bands the, the, the ministry is not the building the ministry is you are we together it's not just an expansion of lands it's an expansion of your destiny all wise spiritually speaking financially speaking the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things all things hallelujah our time is gone but i will want to wrap up this conference by making an altar call is that fine can you spare me two minutes to quickly do that is that all right i believe that there are people here if our time is gone i sincerely apologize if i break any protocol i really really apologize but i just felt it stirred and strong in my heart that there might be people here who may be saying apostle i do not want 21 days to be over without giving my heart and my all to jesus i want to start the year afresh or you're saying i've given my heart to jesus but for some reason things have gone haywire in my life please we have just a minute for you wherever you are in the congregation i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come stand right in front of me here there's no shame brothers and sisters this is a family of faith god bless you people are coming hicc celebrate salvation celebrate the ministry of the spirit our mother is coming here god bless you man God bless you. You don't have to kneel. You just stand. God bless you. Please let's celebrate them. We have just a minute very quickly. Keep coming. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Keep coming. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I see a few officials giving you cards. I'm not sure if you'll be redirected to another place. Someone advised me on what to do. 
Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, now, um, listen, you, you are to fill in the card as legible as you can and as truthful as you can with the information. I believe that there will be a follow-up system to just uh, guide you and follow you up and pray with you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to lead you to pray the salvation prayer. Afterwards, you just follow the direction of the man of God. And while they are praying, all of us together as a family of faith, let us join with them. A harvest of this sort is very, 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 it gladdens the heart of the Father. The Bible says heaven rejoices over the salvation of one soul. All of you standing, can we pray together? Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. I believe that you love me. I believe in your sacrifice. Tonight, at this conference, I make Jesus Lord, Savior, King of my life. I receive the life of God. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. From today and forever, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Father, thank you for this once. You are able to save even to the uttermost. And by your spirit and by your mercy, you have brought them to the cross. I pray that the grace that keep, may that grace rest upon you. I introduce to you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he will turn you into an effective believer. The power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the flesh, the grave is broken over your life. I declare a new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay. Okay. Um, pastor has directed that you return to your seats. You can go back to your seats. Please complete the form. Uh, there should be someone at the end of the service. Are we together? Yes, we'll take them. Um, okay, beautiful. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.